things that I do inside of my business in my life that no one else does. And I think that if they did them or they found something that works for them, they would be making more money and be more successful in their business. So I really believe everyone is the director of our own lives. We're the choreographer of our own performances. So take what I say and don't copy, but find your own thing. And if you don't know me, I'm Bridget James. I'm a multi six figure business. I built it to 700,000 in revenue in less than two years. And I'm so excited to that you're here with me today. If you are watching, make sure that you subscribe, like, do all the things so I know who you are. So I'm kind of harsh in my views, meaning that I don't subscribe to what majority of society says. So if we disagree on certain things, that's okay. I think it's very important for us to disagree. Okay, first thing is that I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to the government. I don't listen to anything that they're telling me. Coming from a background where I lived in New York City and I was like, uh, I was like, yes, Biden, so excited. I like believed everything in the news, all the headlines. I was in New York City in 2020 living there. So everything, like the world was just in shambles and New York City was crazy. And I just listened to everything that was around me. And I never took a minute to just think, what are my own personal views about what's going on in the world? And once I left the States and I started traveling, I remember one day I was in Costa Rica. I was like my first week in Costa Rica and I was out in the water and this guy who was Canadian, he was like, oh yeah, like I don't believe what's going on in the world. And I remember just being like, like, okay, that's interesting. Like, you know, I, I don't really care. Like you can think whatever you want to think. But it was fascinating because in New York City, everyone was like, everyone had one sort of belief. So as I left the United States, I started to discover what my own beliefs are and what I think of the world, what I think true to my heart that I had denied for so long. I, I had been just kind of like a sponge listening to everyone else in the world and what their beliefs were and how I had to behave. And once I realized that, oh wait, I think differently than most of you, it felt so freeing. It felt like, oh, like I finally know who Bridget James Lang is. I finally can go back to her, which I feel like I was her when I was younger, but then I started to kind of get consumed by so many other people. And I'm sure I, I know I still am today, but it's so much nicer to be able to just say my own opinion of what I believe and know that it's mine. So number one, I definitely don't listen to the news or anything that's going on in the world. Um, I just don't believe it. I was just in the States for the holidays and seeing people live, you know, normal lifestyles is just so affirming that that's not anything remotely close to what I want to do. Like the traditional, like get married, get the house, work the same job forever, retire. All of it is just not for me. And being in the States, I really recognize that and realize that also being in the States, you're so, you can consume so easily. Like we were in Colorado and we went to this really nice mall. If you've ever been to Denver, they have a beautiful mall and it's like all designer stuff on the second floor. And I, if I lived there, I would spend so much money. I'd probably go shopping all of the time. Even when we were in the States, we had access to Amazon. And so I was able to order like so many different things that I needed, but I didn't really need because when I was in Costa Rica, or I'm in Thailand right now, like I couldn't get those things. So it's really fascinating how accessible shopping and consumerism is in the state. So I try and stay away from that as much as possible, even living in Thailand now, like because we have our own place here now, we can get stuff shipped here. So I'm, I'm still finding myself wanting to ship more things. Um, still not a lot of stuff, but it's a little bit more than usual. And I think it's really interesting. So I'm just really aware of that, like how much am I consuming? How much am I taking in? Am I buying? Am I spending? I'm, I'll spend thousands of dollars on in myself. Like I just invested $50,000 in a mentorship in a mastermind like that. And like that stuff to me is so much more important than investing in like stuff, like objects and things. So these were a gift. <laughs> actually, these were a gift. This was a gift. This isn't mine. This is actually really funny. <laughs> I think the only thing I'm wearing that I paid for was my hair flip, which is crazy. And actually, I am wearing Fenty lipstick, and that was also given to me. <laughs> and some makeup that I purchased. But 
it's actually just really fascinating to to look at. So I don't like consumerism. I do believe in investing in yourself. I think that's the most important thing that we can do. And of course, I believe in like wearing nice clothes and dressing up, but I don't spend a lot of money on like crazy, crazy things. I think as my business grows, as my wealth consciousness grows, I'll definitely spend more money. But when it comes to spending, I'll spend it on business class tickets, on we live in a four-story, four-bedroom luxury villa in Thailand. We have cleaning people. We have a private driver. Like we do these things more for experiences. You have a personal trainer. She also cooks for us. Like I would so much rather spend all my money on that stuff than like objects and things that aren't going to bring me in joy and life and ease so those are some of the things that i my beliefs around investing and spending and consumerism also when it comes to um like taking care of myself i've always believed that you can heal through mindset work through god through drinking more water through eating healthy through moving your body so when i look at people that are really unwell it's usually like I, I just go back to the basics. I'm like, well, are you working out daily? No. Are you eating crap? Yes. What are your inner thoughts? Who are you hanging out with? What are you consuming? And usually if you shift those things, it's you can make a very quick, you can see a very big shift in their life. Whether it's weight loss or feeling happier or whatever, it's just, uh, it's just going back to the basics. And that's what it is for business too. So in my business... I make sure that I'm posting every day. Like I am posting every day on TikTok minimum three times per day. I do once per day on Instagram because I find that that is the the sweet sauce, the sweet sauce, <laughs> the sweet spot for if you like that sweet sauce, comment sweet sauce below. It, um, for Instagram, I found that it's one very like good high quality content on Instagram every single day and then three times it's more about quality and quantity on TikTok so I do three times per day on TikTok and so showing up every day I mean that's like the baseline if you're not showing up every day on social media that's the number one thing that you should fix and you should start getting into is every single day posting content if you're not running ads you have to build an organic foundation and I think if you're not building an organic foundation you're shooting yourself in the foot so I think social media is an it's just an unmatched opportunity. It's free for us to post on. I'm building an audience with thousands of people. I'm building a personal brand that's going to last me for my entire life. Like people are like, I don't like organic content. It's like I could not care less. Like that is your problem. Fi figure it out. Like start posting, start building an audience. I don't care that you don't like making content. I feel like the what I'm building is so much bigger than just like, Oh, I'm posting on social media and people DM me and I change their lives and it's amazing. It's like this thing, this, it's almost like an organism that lives on the digital land is growing on its own. Like we have 7,000 followers on Instagram now. That's going to be 8,000 soon. TikTok, we're almost at 70,000. Like it's growing on its own now. And I'm so glad that I, in especially 2022, took social media seriously and actually started building a movement on the internet because now people will buy anything from me. I can drop any offer on the internet because I've built a community, a movement on these platforms. People, I could drop like headphones, Freedom Queen headphones, and people would buy them because they're interested in that. And I see so many people, they're like running ads or they're posting to just try and make a sale but if you thought long-term success you would do so well if you started showing up consistently and so being consistent every day is something I'm willing to do that most people aren't willing to do I also sell every day I sold every day in like at the end mid like June no I would say July to the end of the year I sold every day and that's there's no wonder that the end of the year of 2022 was just massive. We did two six-figure sales months and almost 100K cash months and multiple 50 to 60K cash months. And that was after we were doing 20 to 30K cash months simply by selling more. 
So that was a huge lesson for me in 2022. And something that I'm taking into this year is selling more, like selling more offers, talking about my offers more. And it's crazy. Now I just have people enrolling in our micro programs all the time, our membership every day, people DMing me to apply for our masterminds. Like people are wanting to join all these spaces just because I'm talking about them more. My Instagram stories are now solely for selling. Like that's all I'm doing on my Instagram stories is just selling my face off, talking about my offers and people love it. And I give them some behind the scenes, a lot of social proof, uh, client results. And then my feed is like reserved for all of the, um, teachings of me, who I am, educational content, polarized content, my opinion, freedom queen movement energy. So that's the way that I'm selling. And other things that I'm willing to do that people aren't willing to do are community. I place a huge emphasis on building the freedom queen community because I believe that it's something that is going to last me longer than I can imagine. And so the reason I'm not just focused, as I'm focused on content, yes, I'm focused on sales, I'm also focused on community building and movement building. So building relationships inside of the movement, building a network inside of it, building a space where women can come and talk about what they're creating. Because when you have a community, when people are a part of something, they feel like, they're a part of something. Like they feel like they don't want to leave. They feel like they're in this, they're in the freedom queen world. And, and that right there, even just the putting of the crown on, it's so, so, so special because people are now attaching themselves to something that is beyond them. Something that it's like, oh, I'm a part of the freedom queen world, which is so cool. You can even see it back on our YouTube channel page right here with the crown on. And it's also on our, uh, our cover right there on the YouTube channel, it's really important that I create movement community. So I do weekly Freedom Queen Lives. Since the beginning of time, I've been doing weekly lives inside my Facebook group. This year, I started making them more legit. Like this, you know, Mondays at this time, this, you know, whatever, sign up here, here's what's happening. But I can think back to 2021, I was living in Tenerife, which is in the Canary Islands, and I was doing a weekly live in my Facebook group. I even remember back to January of 2021, where I did weekly lives and no one came. No one came. <laughs> it was me inside of my Facebook group, no one was there, and I was like, okay, what's, what's happening? Actually, this was January of 2022. No one was going, no one was there. Because in January 2021, I didn't even have a Facebook group. But January 2022, I had a Facebook group and no one was in the lives. But I still showed up. I still showed up. And I bet if you scrolled, which don't do it because it would take you literal years to scroll back, you would see my old lives of me looking crazy, <laughs> if you want to be entertained, crazy inside of my Facebook groups serving my audience, building a community. And this is something that I've been doing forever. <laughs> community, community, community. Like I, I can see it in the long run. I can see it, how it's going to serve its purpose in the future. There are some days where I'm like, should I just be selling and like look, looking for like a quick win? Cause sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like doing this, but I'm going to do it because I think about you and I think about the people that I'm here to serve and I'm here to help. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to show up. Like you have to do this. You have to be there. So building a community is something I'm willing to do that most people aren't willing to do. I'm also willing to, you know how people talk about being, people talk about being, look, look, look. Like they want to like create a gap between themselves and their audience. I think some people do it too soon. Some people like they think they're at X, Y, Z level, but they're not. And so they try and be like that person, but it just comes off as them being an asshole. And so then it's like, but you're like, why are you trying to charge that? Like you can't charge that because you can't like you, <laughs> this is a very fine line in word. Like you can always charge whatever you want, but there's a line of like, you do not have the confidence to do that. So why are you trying to do those, this level of things? 
And I think in my business, there have been times where I undersold myself, meaning I was actually at that level and I could have been moving at that level, but I undersold myself and thought I was less than. So I've been there. And I've also been at the place where I've tried to oversell myself when I was not there and that didn't work either. So I've always worked on the self-awareness to know like, okay, what am I actually, like looking at yourself as a mirror, what am I actually presenting myself as online? And is that being received the same way that I see myself? So I was just going through all my business stats and my business in terms of what I've charged has been very, um, very linear. Like it has just grown right, you know, month after month, I've raised my prices probably by like anywhere from a $500 to $1,000, $2,000. Every single month, I've increased the amount that I've charged, which has been really amazing to see that how it grows so incrementally. But I've never said like, you know, one month I'm charging $2,000 a month. The next month I'm charging $10,000. Like there's never been that jump like that. Not saying that you can't do that because I don't know who you are. But I've always been very aware of I'm here. Like, and just having that self-awareness to be like, this is where I'm at. This is where my audience is. I think sometimes the ego can get in the way and people are like, you know, I, I want to be at this level, but it's like, but you haven't done the reps to be at that level. So you're going to have to play the game and, and, and work on this level where you're at right now to get to that next level. And that's something that I've always been aware of. It's just like, I'm here now. I remember in the beginning of my business, I wanted to work with, really successful entrepreneurs, but I, at the time, wasn't a successful entrepreneur. Like I had just started out in my business and let me turn this off. I had just started out in my business and people didn't know me. And so I was willing to kind of like roll up my sleeves and get in there. I remember the very beginning of my business, I partnered with this company who was doing online classes and I charged a dollar, one dollar for 30 minutes with me. And I did it with three people just so I could get testimonials. And then I stayed with the company and I started charging like $20 an hour, $30 an hour. And I kept increasing it. And I stopped working with them for many different reasons, but I was willing to do what it takes. Like I was like, I'll charge a dollar, a dollar for 30 minutes. Let's do it just so I can get a testimonial in. And people loved it. And some of those people ended up being private clients and staying with me. And some of them, thank God they did not continue on with me because it was literally a train wreck, but I'm so glad. Like that's what I say. Self-awareness. I was willing to kind of recognize where I was and what I had to do. And I think a lot of people just kind of expect their business to come easily to them when it's not, It, it requires a lot of work. But I've always really loved the game and I really enjoyed doing this, this type of work. So, you know, community, selling every day, posting every day, being willing to look like the newbie, the humble person. I remember in ballet, I used to always do this. Like I would go take really beginner level ballet classes and people would always be like, why are you doing that? You're, you're the top, you're one of the top dancers. And I would just be like, because I want to go back to the basics. Like there's, there's nothing better than just going back to the basics, making money is so easy, but most people, they don't want to do the basic stuff like hosting, selling, the inner work, investing. It's really not that hard, especially in the coaching industry if you're in that. Um, Other things I'm willing to do is deliver, show up for my audience. Like it's, I don't even know what time it is in Thailand. It's 11, wow, it's so early still. It's 11.17 in Thailand and I've already done so much inside of my business and served. I already went live on Instagram this morning at like 7 a.m. I went live on Instagram for an hour. And then I last night I post it. And I post it before bed because it gets the most engagement then because it's Eastern Standard Time morning. It got 300 likes. Like I spent a lot of time on that post. I worked on my... Um, my social media content, like on selling all the things. So I'm making this video. I've already answered emails. Like there's so many different things that I've already done. I've already answered people on Slack. Like I've already served my customers. So 
I am, I'm willing to serve people. I'm willing to be there for people. I'm willing to help people. And that's something that has allowed me to grow like this. Um, I'm also willing to look at my gaps and, and use them as fuel instead of something that brings me down. So if there's something that maybe triggers me or upsets me in my business, I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to use this as fuel to make me go even further inside of my business and my life. And it always does. So these are some of the things. Put your aha moments below. I would love to hear them. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Just click below, subscribe. You can also hit the little alarm button and that will give you notifications for when I'm posting so that you can get access to all these trainings. If you have any questions or, or videos that you would like me to do trainings on, I'm happy to uh, create them for you. And I'm going to go have an amazing day in Thailand. It's beautiful outside. You can see the, um, you can see it from this camera. Oh, it's bad. Uh, crystal clear blue water out there. It's just gorgeous. So I think I'm going to go work out and go have an amazing day. Free and clean. Put your crown on and I will talk to you soon.